My name is Neil Petori, this is EC5510, and this video is about an introduction to random processes. And we're going to talk about how random processes are really nothing to really be scared about. They're just a small extension of what we've already been talking about with random vectors. We had a random vector we called x, and I'm using the underline for the vector, that we had listing elements x1, x2, all the way up to xn. Well, one thing new about random processes is that now we might not have a limit on the number of random variables. This random process might go on forever. And in that case, we might have x1, x2, but then it might keep going. As far as we know, it goes on for all time. And this is in particular, this is called a continuous, I'm sorry, not a continuous, this is called a discrete time random process. Okay, and we have some more examples of discrete time random processes up here. What you should know about a discrete time random process is that we're still going to evaluate it at at most a uh, countable uh, number of events. So it might stop at some particular time, it might go on for all time, but at least we'd be sampling at regular time intervals and we couldn't know the value of the random process at just some arbitrary real number. And that leads into well, the other type of random process that we're going to discuss, which is continuous time. And continuous time random process, we're just saying that we could know the value of that random process at any time. Um, for some real value time. And because we're not going to be able to list them all in a series, we're going to call this x of t for some t that's a real number. So it could be um, a subset of the real line, for example. We could just be asking between time 0 and time 5, but we can ask about any real value of time. Okay? And what's going to happen here is now we can't just have you know a list of the values that we have we might have for any given time we'd have a number but the same thing holds that we've been talking about before with random variables that the random variable itself can be continuous valued or it can be discrete valued so for example continuous uh, valued random process might be putting a thermometer and measuring what's going on with the weather outside. Okay, The temperature can go up and down. At any given point I could figure out what the temperature is outside um, and the temperature can be any real number. A discrete discrete valued is a, is a random process that has a countable set SX. So SX is countable. Now um, we might only have say you know 8 bits of temperature values. We can only be one of 256 temperature values. So we might say okay well now uh, our temperature random process is discrete valued. Um, and of course, you know, we live in a digital world, everything's digital, even our voltmeters are digital, so we could argue that everything that engineers measure is actually discrete time, discrete valued, because it's represented with a finite number of bits, and um, we sample our random processes. So really, it's up to you as an engineer to decide whether the sampling is so often that we can call it continuous time or if maybe you just want to represent what's going on in the real world before sampling. If, if I want to represent what's going on with the temperature outside be, before I sample it, the actual temperature outside, I would say it's continuous valued continuous time. But maybe for some other processes as an engineer I just know it's going to be easier to work with discrete time and so I'll, I'll use discrete time. That's it for this video. We've got these, the most important things are the two differences between random vectors and uh, continuous time. We've got this new notation. We've got the potential for samples to go on 
through infinity. And the next time we're going to talk about some more particular examples of random processes.